Hello and welcome. I am Kim Beegler, the owner of Youthful Fiber Farm and Mill, and I am sitting at home in Harrisburg, Oregon. So exciting. And it's a sunny day, which is always nice. Uh, if you are new to me, I will talk a lot about wool and hand spinning, knitting, all sorts of fiber related things. And if you're returning, thank you. You already know that and you're back. So thank you for coming back. Don't forget to subscribe, comment, because I love all the comments and I do try to comment back as much as I can. And if you're listening to the audio only version of the podcast, sorry, I just hit my microphone maybe. Um, welcome to you too. I have not forgotten you all and I appreciate you all listening. So um, the audio version is actually like bumping up in uh, people that are listening. So that's exciting. I am an audio type of a podcast person myself. So I love it. Okay, let's just jump in. This episode, I'm going to be talking about hand spinning stuff, a little bit more about cotton, because I had one of those aha moments and a new tool I'm learning to use that will has humbled me and will make many of you feel better <laughs> in your hand spinning journey. And uh, what else do I got? Some videos from inside the mail. I have a couple very quick farm videos just from saying hello to some of the farm animals. And my cat is going to make an appearance pretty soon because she's wild right now. Like I hit the record button and she's like, ah, let me bounce off the wall. So we'll see. Okay, let's just jump in, right? Okay, so I'm spinning cotton. And for those of you that have not tried to hand spin cotton, or not hand spinners. Cotton is a whole different beast from wool. Cotton is very, very, very short. And if I haven't showed before, I'll show you some cotton bits. Um, and they are, it, it that breaks down even smaller. So cotton is like, just, it's the tiniest little thing. I mean, quarter of an inch sometimes. So uh, getting the twist in cotton is where in the fun lies because with wool, you generally have a staple length of even, even short wool is going to be two inches or so. Uh, so it gives you more time to get that twist in to keep the yarn together. But with cotton, you don't have that time. So you have to make some adjustments to your wheel. I talked about it more in the last episode. I'll touch on it again in this one. Uh, and you just have to be ready to take a couple deep breaths and, and just trust trust the process and how it's going to work out. So I did want to show you, and I'll probably do a little video of me spinning again, because, um, you know, the more you do it, the, the better you get at it, right? I'm not going to say I'm great at it, but it's getting better, but I am spinning currently. So this is wool or wool. This is some cotton top. I got it from Woolery. Uh, and I'm just going to pull a little bit off because I was spinning it just as is. And if you've been with me for a while, I did not too long ago, I talked about prepping wool top before I was going to spin it. And then I was spinning this and I was fighting it a little bit. And I thought, well, what am I doing? How about if I try to prep this cotton top and lo and behold, guess what you will, you can do the same thing with cotton top that you can do with wool top. So all I am doing is opening it up width wise and it basically just unrolls just the same as if you were doing a wool top so i just am unrolling it and opening it up more and so i'm just pulling kind of chunks out and you can kind of see if you're watching you can see where the fold the fiber just starts to fold in on itself lengthwise so or widthwise i should say um so you can just open that up and look at how much bigger that is to spin. And it's a lot looser because when it folds in on itself, it compacts up and it keeps going. I mean, you can really go for it with opening this up. Same thing with wool top. So what I'm doing is I'm taking a big long strip and then I'm just doing a quick prepping of it before. And I actually will strip it down a little bit lengthwise so that um, it's even a little bit easier to spin. So then I'd spin like this little piece instead of that really compacted other piece that was all of this. And it's going much, much, much smoother. Oh my gosh, sometimes like the simplest things. One thing with cotton, 
Uh, you, you really can't pre-draft cotton, you can't attenuate, meaning you can't stretch the fibers longer like you can with a wool top or any type of wool fiber really because the fibers are so short. If you try to pull any of these out, they're just gonna separate out. So you really just kind of have to work with what you've got as far as that goes, but you can go widthwise when you're working with something like top. So always keep that in mind. There is a very, very distinct, there is always a better end to spin fiber from, be it wool or whatever, um, depending on the processing. And that's just trial and error. You spin from one end, and if that end doesn't seem like it's drafting well or doing what you want, spin from the other end. Now, that is especially true with cotton, and it'll make very, very distinct slubs, like boom, 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 thick spot, thin spot, thick spot, thin spot. So try the other end if it's doing that. Um, you may get that a bit anyway, because if you're new to hand spinning it, it's gonna, that's kind of the natural process, but it will be very distinct and you cannot fix it if you're spinning from the wrong end. So, so there is my much better prepared for me, cotton top. Um, you can also just take it and kind of shake it out. That's another option too, but it just wasn't doing enough. Sometimes that works for me. So, so now I have these big long pieces that are much thinner and much more open and they're a lot easier to spin. <sighs> and then I try to keep the top, the spot that I know is gonna be the end that I wanna spin from, I try to keep that on top when I prep stuff. So I'll do a little video with me at my spinning wheel again. I am, I don't know at what point I started doing long draw. I talked about this in the last episode. And then we had our first Q and A session, session in my Patreon community this week, which was really fun, you all. And if you have any interest in it, you can get into the Q and A sessions for $5 a month. And this is like high hand spinning talk. So if you are a beginner, if you're stuck, if you just want some other input, it's a really great way um, to come in and ask me questions. But even like in this first one, we had different levels of spinners. Uh, so it was different. There were different inputs into things, which was fascinating. I got to learn some new stuff too. Um, we talked about one thing we talked about was holding your fiber so that the fiber is sitting in your hand. And I'll show you a minute when I'm at my wheel somehow. And I don't know when or how, or if it's just the way that I started, but when I spin long draw, I actually have my hand the other way. So the fiber, I'm actually holding the fiber kind of with my thumb and most of my hand is facing the ceiling. Well, naturally, right, the fiber's trying to drop to the ground, uh, just gravity. So I'm doing an ex some extra pinching there that I just don't think I'm ever even aware of. Now, when I flip my hand the other way and then the fiber comes in, guess what? It's just, it can just sit there because I'm not fighting gravity in any way, shape or form. So I am really trying to change, and it'll fall into when I'm spinning wool too, trying to just change how I hold my hands because if you can let a fiber just sit in your hand, not worry about it falling away from you, that's step one and not holding the fiber lightly, right? So um, anyway, see how you're holding fiber. And I notice when I spin short forward that I hold the fiber like this. And then, you know, we talked about how your thumb is kind of a big part of controlling that fiber, especially when you're spinning short forward. So anyway, something to think about, I'll show you again when I'm at my wheel. And um, so that was one of the things we talked about in the Q&A. Before I go to some wheel spinning, we also talked about using waste wool as mulch, which I have done a little bit of, but Linda has done more of it and she was there so she could talk to us a little bit more about different ways to do that. Uh, one of the spinners was new and she, actually three of the spinners that were there were in my, took my online course. One of them is the newest one to it, Stacy, and she was just asking, you know, a really good question. Like, how do you, what are some tips for uh, getting better at drafting? So I actually think I'm gonna write in tomorrow's newsletter or today's newsletter, however it may be, write up some tips of what we talked about in that. But anyway, it was really fun. $5 a month gets you in. Here's one other perk of getting, well, there's a lot of perks of getting into my Patreon community. Um, besides all the fun people you get to meet and talk about wool and all the things about, is I am going to sell some of my Shetland fleeces from this shearing. So it is a full year's length. They are six plus inches and um, my Patreon members are gonna be the first ones to get dibs at them. So um, just another 
perk of that community. Basically, I just started my Patreon as a way to not only support some of this extra, all the content that I'm putting out because it takes a lot of time. I should be milling and instead I'm making content, which I love doing and I love connecting with you all, but I also have to pay the bills. Um, so that's why I started it. In addition to, it's a way that I have for bringing lots of people around the world really together for all of us to talk about fiber. Yay. So there's a link in the show notes. If you are interested, it's a fun place. Okay. Let's go to actually one more thing I'm going to talk about, and then we'll go to that quick hand spinning video. And I'm going to show you the new thing I'm learning and that I signed up for an online class for because as a course creator myself, why am I on YouTube trying to hunt down, driving myself crazy, trying to hunt down somebody that can teach this step-by-step -step with the right camera angle, with the right time to do it? So, and also, why wouldn't I want to support another creator out there who is teaching, who's put the energy into a course? Because I, because I can't. Financially, if I have the means to do that, I am absolutely, that's like one of the best places I feel like I can spend my money is supporting other makers, teaching other makers. So um, not everybody can do that. I realize that. And I think YouTube is a wonderful thing for that. Um, but it's really, it can be extra hard and frustrating to try to learn off of YouTube. Um, and because a lot of people aren't making any money off of it or making minimal money. And so uh, trying to put the hours and hours of work into it doesn't necessarily always make sense, right? I get it. Okay, but back to the other thing I'm learning. Support spindle spinning. My friend Maggie was kind enough to, for the second time, <laughs> let me borrow some support spindles for her. The first time I borrowed them and uh, I just never made time to learn. This time I, I was just like, Maggie, I'm ready. Let's do this again. So support spindle, for those of you that have not seen, is um, a drop spindle. It doesn't look exactly like this, but in theory, a drop spindle um, looks a little more like this. Top world drop spindle has a hook on it. I have done some videos on it and I can certainly talk more about that later if you all want. But a support spindle is you, a drop spindle in any form, you are holding in the air and you are support, like you're, it can drop. <laughs> and lots of times it does. Um, a support spindle is literally just that. It's supported, right? So you have a dish, which Maggie was kind enough to give me different things to try out. This is a little um, bean baggy thing that has a little dish in it. And the spindle sits on the dish and then you're doing some spinning of the spindle and you're drafting the fiber out. So the spindle is supported versus being in the air. Um, so let me tell you all. I, um, started this again the other night and it did not go well. And I thought, well, that's cause it was like one in the morning, obviously. I promptly messaged Maggie the next day and I said, why would you send me <laughs> broken support spindles? Cause obviously it has to be, the spindles are broken. Uh, I was telling my Patreon people about this and we were all cracking up because it was very humbling when I can spin and you generally will spin a long draw when you're on a supportive spindle. Well, I can spin long draw all day long. I have an online course teaching how to spin long draw on a spinning wheel. But this is not a spinning wheel. This is a very different tool. And it was very humbling because I was sitting there with this and I was like, I literally, I can't draft. I have forgotten how to draft the fiber. This makes no sense. What is going on? I tried the next day. I tried a couple times and I was like, you know what? I'm taking the class. And I was going through YouTube and I was finding a video and I was like, nope, I'm signing up for a class. So I will tell you all about the class once I get a little bit more into it, but I'm very excited. The teacher is awesome. Um, Josephine Walton, I think that's her name. I will put a link in the show notes. She does a lot of spindle spinning courses. And so far it's exactly, I mean, it kind of falls in line with how I teach on a wheel, very step by step. So we're just learning how to work with the tool to start with which is so important. And in my online course, it's the same thing. If you do not understand how a spinning wheel works and how your spinning wheel works, spinning yarn is going to be so much more difficult. And I think a lot of spinners learn without ever learning much about their wheel. So um, basically at this point I can turn, but I already figured out I was probably trying to draft with a hand I shouldn't have been trying to draft with because I was taking a lot of assumptions from my wheel spinning. So 
it goes to show two things. Classes are wonderful. <laughs> if you can take them, they are wonderful. But also that a lot of people will say you should learn to spin on a drop spindle before you learn to spin on a wheel. Well, there are things that you can take from learning on a drop spindle, but in just the same way, there are things you can take from learning to spin on a wheel. And they're very different tools. So I don't know that, I mean, I've always said you can learn on whichever one. I learned on a wheel first. Lots of people will learn on a spindle first. It just depends, but it's not going to transfer quite as easily as you think, whichever way you go. But you are gonna have a lot of the basic knowledge. So anyway, and spindle spinning is a much more, uh, budget conscious way to learn to spin 100%. So my new course that I am taking and my new thing that I am learning and why, because that's why. How's that? Is that a good enough reason? I think so. Um, okay. So why don't I go, oh, real quick before I forget, because I know I'm just going to switch over after I get back to what's happening at the mill. The Calliope knit along is coming to an end. I'm extending it by a couple days. It's supposed to end on the 15th, but I was like, we didn't really look at a calendar and you need the weekend to be able to knit. So we are going to end it, I think on Monday, potentially Tuesday, we're gonna film a Zoom. Um, if you're not in the Ravelry thread, please send me a message somehow saying you are in that knit along with a picture of your sweater cast on because we have gifts and I want to, we're gonna pull gift names and um, I wanna make sure you're included, but I can't run around myself. It's too much. I get too, oh, I just, things get lost. So if you are not in the Ravelry thread and you are part of the knit along, please just send me a message or an email or a DM on Instagram and say, here's my picture. I am in the knit along for the Calliope sweater. So knit hard this weekend, guys, but you don't have to finish. You don't have to finish. It's okay. But there's some extra days if you wanted to push yourself to finish by the deadline. So. Okay, now let's go. Hopefully I'm wrapping all of this around enough because I know I'm kind of jumping a little bit. I get too excited about talking about fiber, but let's go to the spinning wheel. Let's spin some cotton, hopefully. And um, then I'll be back after that to talk about what's happening at the mill. All right, you all, we are at the wheel and I'm going to put the drive band on and because I've been good and like I have said in the last video I have this on a very small whirl size because we want the twist to go in quickly and the smaller the whirl size the faster the twist will go in and I have uh, the tension set very very low because we do not want this ripping the fiber out of my hands and I'm going to make sure you all can see and I think you can see pretty well. So we are going to get this girl started and we'll see if it, not my best join there, but so you see that I have got my hand up now and really my front hand isn't doing a whole lot except for when I get to the top, I use it to kind of help even out the next fiber, that little lump that can happen there. And of course, whenever I'm on camera, it's like I can't spin as well to save my life, but I'm busy talking and not spinning as well as I should. And I can tell you that I am pinching too hard. So there we go. And there are some little clumps in this top that you sometimes have to work out. but cotton really just takes me a sec. And I honestly have been working on my calliope, so I haven't been spinning as much cotton, but we'll get back into it in a second here. All right, back at the wheel with more fiber and hopefully a little bit more um, consistency. This is not my most consistent yarn, but as I have, you see when I join, I hold on to it for an extra second and then we start. And when I am spinning this, if I make even the tiniest adjustment to um, my tension, it is like night and day in spinning this. So I have to be very mindful not to make, you know, as your bobbin gets heavier, you do want to 
increase the tension on your bobbin but and you do with cotton as well but very minimally because otherwise my cat's here so we're just spinning away we're just spinning away and if you see where I start to get a little lumpy bumpy that's generally actually this is a little bit tight anyway so let's get the spin out of that there but Generally speaking, it's because I'm gripping my fiber too tight, and so it's coming out in clumps. And I'm at the very end. So we'll grab another little piece and see if we can get a little more spun here. But just practicing. That's what all these crafts are. They take practice. So even if you're a beginner and you're like, why is my yarn not looking perfect? Well, it takes practice. It's the biggest thing you can do is sit at your wheel every day and just chug along. It doesn't have to be perfect. Eventually it will be if that's where you want it to be. But for lots of us, it doesn't need to be perfect. Okay. There's some spinning yarn, cotton for you. Okay, and now we're back and I'm making sure, oh my gosh, you all, I have this fear of, because I have done it before where I filmed the vlog and then the microphone wasn't working, but we look at, okay, spinning cotton. Don't be afraid of spinning cotton. If you can spin long draw, I would say, if you want to learn to spin cotton and you are a short forward spinner, learn to spin long draw first and then start spinning cotton because otherwise you're trying to learn a lot of things at once. And if you know long draw, you're halfway there in the cotton spinning. It's just some different technique changes to your wheel, really. So, and your patience level maybe. Okay, so what is happening at the mill? So I, Fiber Club is done for March. It's in the mail. I've got lots of fun videos of you to share with you because it was a bit of a labor of love again this month. I think the next couple of months will be some labors of love at the wool mill, but that's how it goes. You really have to love wool <laughs> to work with it this much, right? Uh, so that is in the mail. Next week, I will have an episode that is processing it pretty much beginning to end. So that'll be fun. Um, what else am I doing? Oh, I do have some videos of some Shetland and silk and you all at the time of this filming there are two balls of this left so if you are interested go to the show notes jump into sh the shopping section and go grab this Shetland silk it's really beautiful it is from when my sheep were shorn every six months so the fiber is three inches or so and then the silk is thrown in it's about a 90 10 you don't need a ton of silk to make a big difference um, so it's a Shetland silk. I've got videos on that, which is pretty fun. And I'm kind of in a in-between period. Fiber Club is done. I've got a couple weeks, but my birthday's coming up and I want to take a little downtime. So it's like, what can I get done without? Um, and Sunshine is out and Mitch is now driving a truck for, he's driving a semi truck. So he started another business. Um, I'm not going to dive into that too much, but he is very busy starting now with driving truck because farming season has kind of begun. Like we're, in, we're, we're in the slow incline up to when it gets really busy. So he's busy, he's living earlier, and I'm trying to take it a little bit easy when all of this is going on. So I, um, I think I'm going to cart up some Jacob soon. I just washed some Jacob up. I've got a couple other things that I'm going to cart up exciting before the next fiber club. So just stay tuned, just stay tuned. Okay, that's all I've really got to talk about at the mill. There is a mill day on the 23rd of this month. It's starting one hour late. So if you are in the area, 11 a.m. till 3 p.m. on March 23rd is open mill shop day. Come sit, hang out, make, just browse, whatever you want to do. Uh, it's a wonderful group and, but it's going to start an hour late. So 11 a.m. Okay. Let's head to some videos. I just have a couple quick videos from the mill and I have a couple quick videos from the farm. We'll pop in and see the sheep and we will pop in and see June really quick and then I'll be back and we'll wrap it up. Okay, see you all in a minute, enjoy. All right, you all, here's something I have not done probably since the first year I own the mill and this is Shetland and Silk. 
picked out, I'm gonna say this is yearling. It's definitely not this year, so it's shorter staple length, which makes means it's gonna work great with the Shetland. And just white silk. So I don't think this is gonna last long. Whew, because I may run home with it all before it ever makes its way anywhere. All right, let's get this on the carter. Okay, you all, we are at the carter. And I am carding up. This is the Shetland Silk. Uh, I put it out there to my Patreon people. And it was gone. In about a half hour, they grabbed up what I had done. So I'm going to do another small batch. And I'm not sure if there will be any left. But I've said it a million times, but I'll keep saying it again. My Patreon is a great place to get first dibs on fibers. They always get first, even at the $5 level, which also has the Q&A starting this month. And after that, it's my newsletter. So if you are interested in some of these fibers I'm making and you're like, why am I not seeing them? All right, actually, I'm gonna put a little bit more on here before we go look. Okay, so let me get a little bit more on here. And then we'll go look on the other end. And I'm doing this pretty light. I've got my machine slowed down a little bit because I just wanted it to process the silk really well. Um, the Shetland is shorter because it was a six month shearing. So that's nice. It's staying together well. And um, so my machine is slowed down and I'm just, putting it it's so stinking fluffy and I kind of forgot I ran just a little bit before I left for the weekend and then I forgot and I came back and stuck my hands in it and today and was like holy holy cow you all it is some lovely stuff so let me finish laying this out nicely and then we'll go take a peek and see what it's like on the other side Here she comes. It's so shiny. The shine is ridiculous and the feel of it, because this is some of my younger Shetlands and it was just a six month, let me, um, it was just a six month shearing. So it just is really, really nice fiber. And I spun a tiniest sample and yes, it does spin as you would like it to. Oof. All right. I thought we'd check in with the sheep today. I'm out with Nigel walking. And these guys are down here. That's Jojo right there. And everybody else is coming from, oop, wrong way, always. Coming from the top up by our house. Quite a few of them are still up there. They'll slowly all kind of trickle down. Jojo was the first one, or she never left. I'm not sure this is where they got hay this morning. So they'll slowly start to trickle down. Here they come from the other pasture. That's the excitement down here. Nigel is somewhere. There's the troublemaker. And now I think everybody's just about down here. It's Alexis. <laughs> there's Dolly. Come down to eat down here for a little while. And here's Nigel on his bionic leg. Pretty good. He will occasionally lift it up if he's trying to run. But it has been three months. So we're slowly easing him back out into Nigel Yuck, chicken poop, uh, farm chores. And little bits of freedom that he gets while we keep working on just building up more strength in his muscles and everything. So that he doesn't want to hold that leg up anymore. All right, I'm gonna get off to work. Next week maybe I'll show you more of the, we'll go visit more of the animals. 
I wanted to show you because June is in full shedding mode. Uh, and of course it was crispy last night, cold, but this is all, I just like, if I touch her, hi June, she's like, why are you talking about me? If I touch her, then I'll run the brush, see if I can do it with my other hand. But if I just run the brush down her, look at that. It's crazy. Crazy, crazy, which is good because a lot of times with the um, Cushings and everything, they do not shed well. But she is in decent shape for her and shedding well. It's a sign for us that she's doing as good as she can do. So it's a foggy morning out. Fog's starting to lift now. And I was going to pop over and see if Cuddlebug's still being a weirdo. <laughs> He's being less weird. He's such a goat. He had his head just resting. I have a picture of it, so I'll put it here. He had his head just resting, head on, just against the wall. Just, maybe he's going to do it again. No, he's going to go eat. It was pretty funny. Okay, onward with our day. All right, that's all I've got this week. Can you believe it? I hope you enjoyed those. Like I said, there's two Shetland silks left. Um, jump on over to my Patreon and see if it's something you might be interested in. It's a very fun, um, I'm so grateful for all the people that have come into my fiber world, whether it is in the shop or in the community online or in my courses, it's, tr it's pretty amazing. And the, um, the different online zooms that I have are so wonderful. So come on, join on in. And hopefully my dog barking is not going to make this too insane, but He's out doing his job trying to keep bald eagles and such away from the farm. So anyway, thank you so much for joining me. I will hopefully see you next week. And until then, be kind to everyone around you. Please stay healthy and make so many pretty things until I see you next. Okay, take care and thank you so much for taking time to spend with me.